A full-on crisis brews in the River State chapter of the All Progressive Congress APC as warring factions take steps to take hold of power. And a whooping 4.4 billion naira of public money budgeted for the National Assembly is allegedly missing and Sarap wants to know where it is. Well, this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anacon. In contravention of the decision of a faction of the All Progressive Congress APC in the River State to shun the forthcoming council polls in the state, another bloc of the party led by Senator Magnus Abe has conducted primary elections to select candidates for the exercise. Both River State APC factions have been working at cross purposes um, following the crisis of confidence in the 2015 governorship ticket of the party. Joining us to discuss this is APC spokesperson Ogbonna Muke and acting chairman APC River State, Golden Ben Choma. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the show. Good evening. Thank you. Brian. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, before we start this conversation, because my first question is going to be for both of you and you'll take turns to answer. Let's go to an interview I had in 2019 with former Senator um, Magnus Abe as he lay the foundation as to what caused the crack in the APC in River State. And when we come back, we'll have this conversation. One very painful experience we had was uh, after the Congresses, when we met at the home of the Minister of Petroleum in the South South Caucus. And everybody at the meeting agreed that what happened in River State was wrong. But they said that uh, nobody could call Amechi to other except the president because he's DG to the president. And, you know, when that happens, people, party members would definitely feel aggrieved. Before the primaries, we had congresses. And these issues were already on ground before the congresses. And then every effort that was made to try to resolve them at that time proved abortive for the same reason that, um, you know, the leadership was not ready to accept any compromise, except either we leave the party or Senator Abe should not participate, should not, uh, people should not say they're running for office, except as determined by him. And then a lot of us felt that the reason we left the PDP in the first place was so that we could do things differently. And so having put our lives on the line, to build this new party that is based on the ideology of change and freedom, we felt that the only place in Nigeria where we could exercise that freedom should be in the APC. So I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Golden Chama. What exactly is going on in the APC in River State? Who is the leader of the APC in River State? Yeah, um, Mary, I want to say that I will have said they adopt the views as contained in the video you just showed, which the senator has eloquently and concisely stated. It. First and foremost, the APC in River State, under the leadership of Honorable Guaguma, where I am the deputy, the president is acting chairman, is moving up. We are sailing, and nobody can stop a sailing ship. We are selling because we need to bring the party back to its core values. The party was created or formed to contest political power. And that is what we want to do. We are going to contest the local government election as being uh, stated by the River State Electoral Commission. We are ready and we will we'll contest the election. Okay, I, I, I'm bringing this to you now, Mr. Muke. Um, do you agree with this? And I, I, no, you've not, Mr. Choma didn't really answer my question. Who's the leader of the APC in River State and what exactly is going on for there to be two factions in the state? I think that there is an, an attempt to create factions in River State. And uh, I can say to you that... Uh, the National Secretariat of our great party dissolved two structures and set up caretaker committees. Those caretaker committees have been sworn in. I'm not aware that Honorable Golden Ben Choma was sworn in 
by the party. But you haven't answered and my question as to who's leading course, the party. Uh, as to what? Who's leading the party in your state? As there are, there are two factions. Who is Isaac? The... Isaac Albert Obubula is the caretaker committee chairman of the party, duly approved by the National Secretariat of Agri Party, and also approved by a court decision, a high court, a pre court decision, which set aside the government's uh, claim to being chairman. Okay, in, on January 1 or January 14th of this year, um, the APC National Secretary, um, Mr. John Akban Odoidege, had asked members of the APC in the state uh, to respect the decision of its caretaker committee, which they say is led by um, Isaac Ogbobola and not participate in the council election. So I'm coming back to you, Mr. Golden Chama. Um, but your faction is saying that they must participate in this election so that the APC's voice and votes can count. Um, why are you going yes, against um, the national publicity or the national secretary of your party if you yes, are saying um, the party in the state is sailing? Yeah, yeah. Mary, please, uh, I hope we we'll use the opportunity to answer all the questions. You are asking the questions when my friend has raised some issues I want to clarify. First and foremost, the River State High Court, sometime last year, did, inaugurate, did give a judgment. And in that judgment, it spelled out what should be done and who was chairman. That same judgment was obeyed by my colleague in your studio, which, who is also participating. The judgment did say that Igo Aguma should convoke a meeting where he should act as chairman, where he did act and his, uh, the S2 was constituted. Thereafter, 48 hours after, my friend, the Bona Wuki, and his cohort formed a parallel S2 led by Dr. Sekonte, where Wuki, Bona Wuki, was elected or nominated as the public PRO. I, Called it Ngozi Choma, went to court, asking the court to stop the interlopers. And the court, in this wisdom, did agree with me that they were middle top interlopers. And to be fair to you, Mary, they all agreed and disbanded their echo. But upon doing that, they felt that they had lost. They hurriedly went back to look for Bobola. All they had done up to resurrect the dead heart, to come to challenge the valid echo. And let me put it to you, Mary. It's unfortunate, it's unfortunate that people who are high up do not want the masses to continue to exist in a party that is progressive. We are only saying that the court judgment was given by a valid court in Nigeria. We are not asking or quarreling with anybody. When the national went about uh, consecrating the uh, caretaker committee members, they did say all existing escorts in every state should continue in the caretaker mood. Why would our own state be different? No reason. L let me let me come no to let me let me let me go to Mr. Nguke and then I will come back to address this issue. Mr. Nguke, um Akwano in Thank in, in his much. statement had mentioned that the reason why he's asking the APC in, the, in River State not to um, be or participate in the elections was good, a good reason. Did he by any means explain what that good reason was and why the people in APC in River State are not allowed to be part of a local government election that is obviously going to be beneficial to all and sundry? All right, thank you, Mary. The, the, the point must be made here. The, the point must be made here. Of course, PC has said outrightly that it will not participate in an election. And the reason, and I'm sure Golden Choma will agree, that there are chairmen and councillors of the APC who were elected 
before Wunke, Governor Wunke came to power in 2015, and who were removed clearly in, in contradiction of a Supreme Court order, which says that elected councils cannot be removed by governments. And so I, I wonder how rationally anyone who understands the background of what is before us can say at this point in time that running an election organized by the RISEC in River State is the best option. Now, the National Secretariat of Agri Party understands this good reason that the APC has provided. We cannot run an election at a time when members of the party are busy trying to reclaim their rights, their mandate. It will be completely out of place. And it tells you how selfish our brothers on the other side have become. Because the rights of people, the rule of law, even when you talk about, I don't know how he can claim that after he had victory or they had victory in court, the, the law allows people to enter an appeal. And the APC justifiably entered an appeal, which has been ruled upon by a court of appeal in this country. Well, the I, problem we have. Let, let's talk about that. That that that. that one moment, and I'll be done. Okay. The problem we have is that these people accept rulings in their favor, but they refuse under the rule of law to accept the rulings given by duly constituted courts. Now, um, this they're saying the the Magnus Abbey faction is saying that you um, allegedly. Um, took out a court order that is stopping them from participating and every other APC member from participating uh, in the election. But then uh, former Senator Magnus Abbey uh, had something to say um, to a, a remark in, you know, in return to what Mr. Akpano Doidege had said about the APC. Now he was directing his remarks to um, the Minister for Transportation, Chibike Amechi. He did say or challenged him to say that um, he should stop um, giving false hopes to those of you who are in his faction. Um, and, you know, he also said that um, the, the minister should create room and a fair playing field for everybody to participate in the election. And, and that's why he's going ahead to contest the election. And he's asking that if people on your end also want to participate, there should not be anything stopping them. But, I mean... Uh, what guarantees are there for um, the APC faction of Magnus Abe participating in this election um, of winning? Yes, uh, Mary. Mary. Yes. I, I want us to look at it this way. My friend raised an issue which I want us to trash out. The so called chairman and councillor have a designated time which is called tenure. They were sworn in for an office for three years if they so remain. The three years in which they are supposed to be in that office have expired. And as I speak with you, that is your interpretation. Faction, which my friend belongs, which the minister leaked in 2019, as element, the minister, this state openly, if you agree, I will send you the video openly in 2019 that if the ANC candidate wins the governorship election in 2019, that after one month there will be election for local government chairman and councillor. On that day, <laughs> was it that the councillors were no longer in court? Maybe. But there is Let's a. But, there, but, but I, I did speak to one of the. Well, I, I did speak to one of the aggrieved local government chairmen who were sacked by the weekend administration, and he did say that they still have a pending court yeah. case, and so um, it's even illegal for the yeah. PDP government to Please. actually Maybe. have another local government election. Yeah, Mary. The government is not a contravention of any law. 
that they want to do elections, they can go ahead to do elections. So are you in agreement with are you in agreement with the PDP? I'm sorry, Mr. Chama. Are you in Mary. agreement with Governor Wike and Mary. the PDP for sacking those local yes. government chairmen who are under your party? Uh, and you're saying that they don't have a right to continue to push or pursue this in court. No, I'm not saying that. But, you're say, but you just that said that their tenure, their tenure has expired. For, the tenure for which they were sworn in Look. has elapsed in law. What they, I, what they will benefit now, if they win the case, I pray they do win, is what we call damages. They will earn their salary, which they have not been able to earn, and it will be given to them. It will be out of place to bring the hand of the clock after four or five years of a lap. When the West Warning was sometime in uh, May, or uh, I think uh, May or April 2015, by now we we'll have over six years of a lap. So you can't be talking about the same office. If you're given judgment, I pray they are given they will all be compensated with damages. But okay. my argument is, even the Minister of Transportation himself, this state, in 2019, in LMA local government, when he was introducing the ANC Constitutional candidate, this state, that if he wins, in less than one month, there will be election for the local okay. government chairman. Mr. So who, who, who is fully who? Mr. We Wuke. don't have a problem with that. Okay, let, 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 let's allow Mr. Uh, Wuke come in briefly. Uh, I think he has... has made this open. Okay, let, let's and just... we are staying as a party. The only agenda uh, we have is to seek political power. Okay. I will go ahead. All right, Mr. Wuke, go ahead. Um... Now, notice that, critically, um, my friend and colleague, appears to be dodging the questions that you put before him and rather prefers to engage in an excursion that leads us nowhere. I am surprised that uh, Mr. Benchoma is speaking more like a, a PDP person than an APC person. He is speaking not like a progressive who understands that the rule of law is critical in all matters. Now, it is shocking that uh, this gentleman, who is also a lawyer, believes that the best thing uh, is a compensation that is coming from the ruling. Should there be one in favor of the APC? But what is critical here is that it is not, I do not believe that it is necessary to engage in an election when there are matters pending before the court of law. That, to my mind, also, in real claims, will be seen as an act of contempt. Because you cannot, you cannot proceed. When this matter first came and it came up, they denied, the PDP denied that it was planning an election. Now, they are planning an election while there is a pending matter in court. And we think that will not justify as a responsible party the actions of the PDP or the actions of reset. Now, the only thing here to say is that perhaps it's not something that I should encourage having a conversation with someone who is a claimant to power, who is not recognized by the party. And I wonder on what platform reset will accept a list of candidates who are supposed to be running an election. I am certain that if Rizek was to do his job, it would liaise with INEC. INEC has all of the details that Rizek needs in terms of information. Now, in this instance, only Isaac Obubla has the responsibility given to him by the National Secretary to submit any name or names for any election that the APC will participate in River State. And so, my friend talks about the middle sum interlopers and He's entitled to his opinion, but I, I believe at this point in time, he is more okay. let's of move a middle-sum interloper let's move on than to a man who has credibility when it comes to holding authority. Let's move on to other issues. Uh, back to you, Mr. Golden, because this question is very critical, and he just yeah. he just made mention, um, Mr. Muke just made mention of it. Now, um, the Isaac Obobula faction uh, in December of 2020 had declared 
that your leader, Senator Magnus Abe, um, was suspended alongside with several other people, including Livingston Nwuche, Nwuche and several other people. Um, they were suspended. They were declared mm -hmm. suspended from the party for anti-party activities um, and had recommended for the expulsion of Senator Magnus Abe and every other person who took part um, or took part to the court order that was taken to stop the revalidation exercise of the APC. Where does this leave your faction of the party? Because he's saying that you sound more PDP than a progressive. Uh, 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 Mary, the unfortunate situation of it is when my friend said I wasn't asking, I wasn't asking questions. He is not answering the questions I asked. I just asked. I went to court against him, and I said I called them middle some interlopers in court, and the court agreed. Ask him. Did I go to court? If yes, let me confirm. So let's please that. Let me also please with you, Mary. Would you agree to also air the video I will send to you where the minister in 2019 did say there will be an election if the AAC candidate wins? Mary, this election will not be the first when this matter is in court. Mary, as I speak with you, the local government chairman now in River State, the elections were conducted sometime uh, three years ago. The matter already was not still in court. So being in court does not stop them from conducting the election. But let me join the issue with you. But wouldn't that be a contravention to a court see, order if a matter is already Obopula in court? Obopula is unknown to law. If Obopula was in existence, ask Obona Wuki, why was Dr. Sekonte uh, 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 nominated as caretaker chairman from his group? And he himself made the arrow. If Obopula was valid, why was Dr. Sekonter made chairman? Okay, can I take the question? Can I take that question? Please. Is please it possible do. I can take the question? Please do, please do. Yeah. All right. Now, let us look at the narrative properly. Golden, you know that the National Secretary of a great party anointed Obubula and his colleagues as members of the Kerika Committee. And that, uh, thereafter, Igor Aguma went to court. I'm sure you know that. And that ruling threw up a major issue, the participation of statutory members. And I'm happy that you are one of us. He's a statutory member of a great party. Now, clearly, the actions that you refer to were actions that were taken when Ibagoma acted in breach. And I'm sure you know that too. And I, I, I believe we should be telling the Nigerian people the truth tonight. It is not something, uh, there's no need for us to pretend that we are in a debate because we are not. The facts will speak for themselves. Now, clearly, I admit that you went to court. You did. And I'm certain you're also aware that the position that you are taking was challenged. Now, clearly, what is before us right now is the demolition of all structures. And I'm happy that your side of the APC went to court, up to the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court ruled that all structures set up within the period of crisis should be demolished. The National Secretary of Agri Party has demolished those structures. Hmm and set up a caretaker committee who set an agenda. You want your voices heard, and that is right. And when a decision is taken, men who are law-abiding, men who are not non-conformists, we conform. Decisions cannot be taken on the basis of the conviction. That is why you have arbiters. And it is strange that you and your colleagues have brought us to this pass. But one thing is certain, the rule of law will prevail. And I'm sure, I'm very sure, that what we seek out of the case that those men, your party men, your former party men that you are denying today, who are in court, is a pronouncement <laughs> of the Supreme Court. All right, gentlemen, I, I, I we, think we need to wrap up. We need to things. Gentlemen, That's what we seek. Gentlemen, we need to wrap up. No, 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 no. Not, but we want to hear from the Supreme Court. All right. Because yeah. the position has been taken by the Supreme Court that this Mr. Okay. cannot be demolished by if, any government. If you, you can hear me, if you can hear me, I have just a minute and I'm going to give you both 30 seconds each to speak. Where does the party go from here? 
Will there be any healing of sorts? Because, I mean, I do not know if a house divided against itself can actually stand, especially if you're going against the PDP, who's been in, that, in power for eight straight years and they're running a local government election, plus your party is divided on it. So going forward, what is the APC going to do? And I'm not talking about the APC in Rivers because you're already divided. What is the National Working Committee doing to deal with this um, crack in the party to reconcile all factions? Because I don't know if expulsion is the way to go for the APC in River State. I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Choma, and then, of course, we'll wrap up Mr. Mr. Mookie. 30 seconds each, gentlemen. Let's just keep to time. Yes. The National Secretary should leave above board and call all members for general reconciliation. No one man should determine the fate of a multitude. And no one should conquer the other. We all belong to this party and we have sacrificed our political growth for this party to grow. But let me end with this. APC will be on the ballot in the local government election. Thank you. Mr. Wuke. Uh, well, <clears throat> I, I, I'm amused uh, because it's difficult to understand where the, the authority to present a list of candidates is emanating from. But let me say that as members of a party, we have been having conversations, and I'm sure Mr. Ben Golden Ben Choma will agree, he was a member of a committee that I belong to, and we had conversations. And I believe that those conversations will continue, regardless of uh, what may be an attempt to derail it. Now, we, we, we are offering a clear playing field for everyone. And that's what we should do, and not engage in power sharing, which is what these people want. But nonetheless, they are PDP in the night and APC in the day. And their position is becoming increasingly embarrassing and understood. All right, gentlemen, we have to wrap things up. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Obunna Mwoke and, of course, Golden Ben Chama, both of the APC in two different factions. Thank you very much for speaking with us on Plus Politics. Thank you so much. All right, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, Serap is in the news again, and this time it's asking the National Assembly to find the missing 4.4 billion naira. We'll talk about it when we come back after this break.